Welcome to one of the additional Bible studies for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, we're going to be reading from chapters 12 to 25 of Deuteronomy. This is the Tanakh. Before we get started, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Father God, we just want to thank you for the ability to be here together to study your word. We love your word, Father, in all its forms and versions, and we ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart, that we may be receptive to your holy word. We just thank you, Father God, for everything. And we give you all our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, as always with the additional Bible studies, if there's anything that needs to be pointed out, um, I will do it as we go along. We, we're not going to recap. We have already done that with the same um, chapters uh, in our main Bible study because we're kind of running parallel yet um, with the NASB version and with the Tanakh. Now, after the book of Judges, we're going to be, it's going to split because the book of Ruth is, is not in, in the Nevim. It's in the Ketchavim, actually. So we're going to get started and start with chapter 12. These are the laws and rules that you must carefully observe in the land of the Lord God of your fathers is giving you to possess as long as you live on earth. You must destroy all the sites at which the nations you are to dispossess worship their gods, whether on lofty mountains, on the hills, or under any luxuriant, luxuriant tree. Tear down their altars, smash their pillars, put their sacred posts to the fire, and cut down the images of their gods, obliterating obliterating their name from that site. Do not worship the Lord your God in like manner, but look only to that site that the Lord your God will choose amidst all your tribes as his habitation. To establish his name there. There you are to go, and there you are to bring your burnt offerings and other sacrifices, your tithes and contributions, your votive and free will offerings, and the first lines of your herds and flocks, together with your households, you shall feast there before the Lord your God, happy in all the undertakings in which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not act at all as we now act here, every man as he pleases, because you have not yet come to the allotted haven that the Lord your God has given you. When you cross the Jordan and settle in the land that the Lord your God is allotted to you, and he grants you safety from all your enemies around you, and you live in security, then you must bring everything that I command you to the site where the Lord your God will choose to establish his name, your burnt offerings and, their, and other sacrifices, your tithes and contributions, and all the choice votive offerings that you vow to the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God with your sons and daughters and with your male and female slaves along with the Levite in your settlements, for he, it, he has no territorial allotment among you. Take care not to sacrifice your burnt offerings in any place you like, but only in the place that the Lord will choose in one of your tribal territories. There you shall sacrifice your burnt offerings, and there you shall observe all that I enjoin upon you. But whenever you desire, you may slaughter and eat meat in any of your settlements according to the blessing that the Lord your God has granted you. The unclean and the clean of life may partake of it, as of the gazelle and the deep and the deer, but you must not partake of the blood. You shall pour it out on the ground like water. You may not partake in your settlements of the tithes of your new grain, wine or oil, or of the first length of your herds and flocks, or of any of the votive offerings that you vow, or of your free will offerings, or of your contributions. These you must consume before the Lord your God in the place that the Lord your God will choose you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female slaves, and the Levite in your settlements. Happy before the Lord your God in all your undertakings. Be sure not to neglect the Levite 
as long as you live in your land. When the Lord enlarges your territory as he has promised you, and you say, I shall eat some meat, for you have the urge to eat meat, you may eat meat whenever you wish. If the place where the Lord has chosen to establish his name is too far from you, you may slaughter any of the cattle or sheep that the Lord gives you as I instructed you, and you may eat to your heart's content in your settlements. Eat it, however, as the gazelle and the deer are eaten, the unclean may eat it together with the clean, but make sure that you do not partake of the blood, for the blood is life, and you must not consume the life of the flesh. The blood is very important. It is the life of, of the living being. It is the life force. You must not partake of it. You must pour it out on the ground like water. You must not partake of it in order that it may go well with you and with your descendants to come for you will be doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. But such sacred and votive do donations as you, you may have shall be taken by you to the sight that the Lord will choose. You shall offer your burnt offerings, both the flesh and the blood, on the altar of the Lord your God. And of your other sacrifices, the blood shall be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God, and you shall eat the flesh. Be careful to keep all these commandments that I enjoin upon you. Thus it will go well with you and with your descendants after you forever. For you will be doing what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. When the Lord your God has cut down before you the nations that you are about to eat, enter and dispossess, and you have dispossessed them and settled in their land, beware of being lured into their ways after they have been wiped out before you. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, How did those nations worship their gods? I too will follow those practices. You shall not act thus towards the Lord your God. Chapter 13. Oh, I'm sorry. For they perform their gods every abhorrent act that the Lord detests. Now it's chapter 13. Um, they even offer up their sons and daughters in fire to their gods. Careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you, neither add to it nor take away from it. It's kind of chapter 12 and 13 kind of ran together. The sentence actually was not completed in, in this Bible. And actually there's a there's a semicolon, so it, it actually wasn't a completed sentence from chapter 12 to 13. It was very interesting how, how this is written. If there appears among you a prophet or a dream diviner, and he gives you a sign or a portent, saying, Let us follow and worship another God whom you have not experienced, even if the sign or portent, portent he named to you comes true, do not heed the words of that prophet or that dream diviner. For the Lord your God is testing, to, testing you to see whether you really love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Follow none but the Lord your God and revere none but him. Observe his commandments alone and heed only his orders. Worship none but him and hold fast to him. As for the prophet or dream divi diviner, he shall be put to death. For he urged disloyalty to the Lord your God who freed you from the land of Egypt and who redeemed you from the house of bondage to make you stray from the path that the Lord your God commanded you to follow. Thus you will sweep out evil from your midst. If your brother, your own mother, son, or your son or, or daughter, or the wife of your bosom or your closest friend entices you in secret, saying, Come, let us worship other gods, who neither you nor your fathers have experienced from among the gods of the people around you, eat either near to you or distant, anywhere from one end of the earth to the other, do not assent or give heed to him. Show him no pity or compassion and do not shield him to take his life. Let your hand be the first against him to put him to death and the hand of the rest of the people thereafter stone him to death for he, ought to, he sought to make you stray from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Thus all Israel will, will hear and be afraid. And such evil things will not be done again in your midst. If you hear it said of one of the, the towns the Lord your God is giving you to dwell in, that some scoundrels from among you have gone and subverted the inhabitants of their town, saying, Come, let us worship other gods whom you have not experienced. 
You shall investigate and inquire and interrogate thoroughly. If it is true, the fact is established and that a abhorrent thing was perpetrated in your midst. Put the inhabitants of that town to the sword and put its cattle to the sword. Doom it and all that is in it to destruction. Gather all its spoil into the open square and burn the town and all its spoil as a holocaust to the Lord your God. And it shall remain an everlasting ruin, never to be rebuilt. But nothing that has been doomed stick to your hand in order that the Lord may turn from his blazing anger and show you compassion, and in his compassion increase you, as he promised your fathers on oath, for you will be heeding the Lord your God, obeying all his commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, doing what is right in the sight of the Lord your God. Chapter 14, you are, you are children of the Lord your God. You shall not gash yourselves or shave the front, front of your heads because of the dead. For you are a people consecrated to the Lord your God. The Lord your God chose you from among all other people, peoples on the earth to be his treasured people. You shall not eat anything abhorrent. These are the animals that you may eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the deer, and the gazelle, and the, the robot, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, the mountain sheep, and any other animal that has true hooves, which are cleft in two and brings up the cuts and such you may eat. But the following, which do bring up cut or have true hooves, which are cleft through, you may not eat the camel, the hare, and the daemon. For although they bring up the cud, they have no true hooves. They are unclean for you. Also the swine, for although it has true hooves, it does not bring up the cud. It is unclean for you. You shall not eat of their flesh or touch their carcasses. Though you may eat of all that live in the water, you may eat anything that has fins and scales, but you may not eat anything that has no fins and scales. It is unclean for you. You may eat any clean bird. The following you may not eat, the eagle, the vulture, and the black vulture, the kite, the falcon, and the buzzard of any variety, every variety of tavern, of, of, of raven, and the ostrich, and the nighthawk, and the seagull, and the hawk of any variety, the little owl, the great owl, the white owl, the pelican, the bus, bustard, and the comorant, the stork, and any variety of heron, and the hoopoe, and the bat. All the wings swarming things are unclean for you. They, they may not be eat, eaten. You may not eat. I mean, I'm sorry. You may, you may eat only clean winged creatures. You shall not eat anything that has died a natural death. Give it to the stranger and your community to eat, or, or you may sell it to a foreigner. For you are a people consecrated to the Lord your God. You shall set aside every year a tenth part of the yield of of your sowing that is brought from the field. You shall consume the tithe of your new grain and wine and oil and the firstlings of your herds and, and your flocks in the presence of the Lord your God in the place where he will, cho will choose to establish his name so that you may learn to revere the Lord your God forever. Should the distance be too great for you, should you, you be unable to transport them, because the place where the Lord your God has chosen to establish his name is far from you. And because the Lord your God has blessed you, you may convert them into money. Wrap up the money and take it with you to the place that the Lord your God has chosen and send the money on anything you want. Cattle, sheep, wine, or other intoxicant, or anything you may desire. And you shall feast there in the presence of the Lord your God and rejoice with your household. But do not neglect the Levite in your community, for he has no heredity hereditary, I'm sorry, portion as you have. Every third year you shall bring out the, the full tithe of your yield of, of that year, but leave it within your settlement. Then the Levite was no hereditary portion as you have. And the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow in your settlement shall come and eat their fill, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the enterprises you undertake. Chapter 15, every seventh year you shall practice remission of debts, and this shall be the nature of the remission. Every creditor shall remit the due that he claims from his fellow. He shall not dun his fellow or kinsman for the remission 
proclaimed is of the Lord. You may dun the foreigner, but you must remit whatever is due from your kinsmen. There shall be no meeting among you, since the Lord your God will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you as a hereditary portion, if only you heed the Lord your God and take care to keep all the instruction that I enjoin upon you this day. So the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised you. You will extend loans to many nations that require none yourself. You will dominate many nations, but they will not dominate you. If, however, there is a needy person among you, one of your kinsmen, in any of your settlements in the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not harden your heart and shut your hand against your needy kinsmen. Rather, you must open your hand and lend him sufficient for whatever he needs. Beware lest you harbor the base thought. The seventh year, the, seventh, the year of remission is approaching so that you are mean to your needy kinsmen and give him nothing. He will cry out to the Lord against you and you will incur guilt. Give to him readily and have no regrets when you do so, for in return the Lord your God will bless you in all your efforts and in all your undertakings. For there will be never, never for there will never cease to be needy once in your land, which is why I command you open your hand to the poor and needy kinsmen in your land. If a fellow Hebrew man or woman is sold to you, he shall serve you six years, and on the seventh year you shall set him free. When you set him free, do not let him go empty handed. Furnish him out of the flock, threshing floor, and vat with which the Lord your God has blessed you. Bear in mind that you were slaves in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I enjoin this commandment upon you today. But should he say to you, I do not want to leave you, for he loves you and your household and is happy with you, you shall take an awl and put it through his ear into the door, and he shall become your slave in perpetu perpetuity. Do the same with your female slave. When you do set him free, do not feel aggrieved, for in the six years he has given you double the service of a hired man. Moreover, the Lord your God will bless you in all you do. You shall consecrate to the Lord your God all male firstlings that are born in your herd and in your flock. You must not work your firstling ox or shear, shear your firstling sheep. You and your household shall eat it annually before the Lord your God in the place that the Lord will choose. But if it has a defect, lameness or blindness, any, any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. Eat it in your settlements, the unclean among you, no less than the clean, just like the gazelle and the deer. Only you must not partake of its blood. You shall pour it out on the ground like water. Chapter 16. Observe the month of Abib and offer a Passover sacrifice. Now, in this Bible also, it is spelled A-B-I-B. But in our Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, the T-L-V, it is spelled A-V, as in victory, I-V. Offer pa Passover sacrifice to the Lord your God, for it was in the month of Abib at night that the Lord your God freed you from Egypt. You shall slaughter the Passover sacrifice for the Lord your God from the flock and the herd and the place where the Lord will choose to establish his name. You shall not eat anything leavened with it. For seven days thereafter you shall eat unleavened bread, bread of distress, for you departed from the land of Egypt hurriedly, so that you may remember the day of your departure from the land of Egypt as long as you live. For seven days no leaven shall be found with you in all your territory, and none of the flesh of what you slaughter on the, on the evening of the first day shall be left until morning. You are not permitted to slaughter the Passover sacrifice in any of the settlements that the Lord your God is giving you, but at the place where the Lord your God will choose to establish his name, there alone shall you slaughter the Passover sacrifice in the evening at sundown, the time of the day when you departed from Egypt. You shall cook and eat it at the place that the Lord your God will choose, and in the morning you may start back on your journey home. After eating unleavened bread six days, you shall hold a solemn gathering, for the Lord your God, on the seventh day, you shall do no work. You shall count off seven weeks. Start to count the seven weeks when the sickle is first put to the standing grain. And then you shall observe the feast of weeks for the Lord your God, offering your free will 
contribution according to the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall rejoice before the Lord your God with your son and daughter, your male and female slave, the Levite in your communities, and the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow in your midst at the place where the Lord your God will choose to establish his name. Bear in mind that you were slaves in Egypt and take care to obey these laws. After the end gathering from your threshing floor and your vat, you shall hold the Feast of Booths for seven days. You shall rejoice in your festival with your son and daughter, your male and female slave, the Levite, the stranger, the father, fatherless, and the widow in your communities. You shall hold a festival for the Lord your God seven days in the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless all your crops and all your undertakings, and you shall have nothing but joy. Three times a year on the Feast of on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, on the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Booths, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place that he will choose. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed, but each with his own gift, according to the blessing that the Lord your God has bestowed upon you. You shall appoint magistrates and officials for your tribes in all the settlements that the Lord your God has given you, and they shall govern the people with due justice. You shall not judge unfairly. You shall, sh shall show no partiality. You shall not take bribes, for bribes blind the eyes of the discerning and upset the plea of the just. Justice, justice shall you pursue, that you may thrive and occupy the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not set up a sacred post, any kind of pole beside the altar of the Lord your God that you may make, or erect a stone pillar, for such the Lord your God detests. Chapter 17, you shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God an ox or a sheep that is a defect of a serious fine, for that is an abhorrent, that is abhorrent to the Lord your God. If there is found among you in one of the settlements that the Lord your God has given you a man or a woman who has affronted the Lord your God and transgressed his covenant, turning to the worship of other gods and bowing down to them, to the sun or to the moon or any of the heavenly hosts, something I never commanded, and you have been informed, or have learned of it, then you shall make a thorough in inquiry. If it is true, the fact is established that an abhorrent thing was perpetrated in Israel, you should take the man or woman who did that wicked thing out of the out to the public place, and you shall stone them, man or woman, to death. A person shall be put to death only on the testimony of two or more witnesses. He must not be put to death on the testimony of a single witness. So it's not one person's word against the other. Let the hands of the witnesses be the first against him to put him to death in the hands of the rest of the people thereafter. Thus you will sweep out evil from your midst. The case is too baffling for you to decide, be it a controversy over homicide, civil law, or assault, matters of dispute in your courts. You shall promptly re repair to the place that the Lord your God will have chosen and appear before the Levitical priest or the magistra magistrate in charge at the, at the time and present your problem. When they have announced to you the verdict in the case, you shall carry out the verdict that is announced to you from that place that the Lord chose, observing scrupulously all their instructions to you. You shall act in accordance with the instructions given you and the ruling handed down to you. You must not deviate from the verdict that they announce to you, either to the right or to the left. <clears throat> Should a man act presumptuously and disregard the, the priest charged with serving the Lord your God or, or the magistrate that will hear and, and be afraid and will not act, I'm sorry, the magistrate that the man shall die, then you shall sweep out evil from Israel. All the people will hear and be afraid and will not act presumptuously. That's the line there. Sorry about that. If after you have entered the land that the Lord your God has assigned to you and taken possession of it and settled in it, you shall decide, I will set a king over me and do all as do all the nations about me. This is really not what God wanted. Um, just to let you know, and we're going to see this as we go, um, as Samuel deals with the people that are asking for the king. Uh, 
to a king to rule over them. And God knew that they would do it, and he prophesied that he would do it, not that he was in favor of that, because God was their king, yet they will ask for a human king like all other nations. I will set a king I will set a king over me as do all the nations about me. You shall be free to set a king over yourself, one chosen by the Lord your God. Be sure to set a king over yourself, one of your own people. You must not set a foreigner over you, one who is not your kinsman. Moreover, he shall not keep many horses or send people back to Egypt to add to his to his horses. Since the Lord has warned you, you must not go back that way again. And he shall not have many wives, lest his heart go astray, nor shall he amass silver and gold to excess. When he is seated on his royal throne, he shall have a copy of the teaching written for him on a scroll by the Levitical priests. Let it remain with him and let him read in it all his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God, to observe faithfully every word of his teaching as well as these laws. Thus he will not act haughtily towards his fellows or deviate from the instruction to the right or to the left to the uh, to the end that he and his descendants may reign long and in the midst of Israel. Chapter 18, the little Levitical priest. I can't talk tonight. The Levitical priest, the whole tribe of Levi, shall have no territorial portion with Israel. They shall live only off the Lord's offerings by fire as their portion, and shall have no portion among their, their brother tribes. The Lord is their portion as he promised them. This then shall be their, the priest's due from the people. Everyone who offers a sacrifice with an ox or sheep must give the shoulder the cheeks and the stomach to the priest. You shall also give him the first fruits of your new grain and wine and oil and the first shearing of your sheep. For the Lord your God has chosen him and his descendants out of all your tribes to be in attendance for service in the name of the Lord for all time. If a Levite would go from any of the settlements throughout Israel where he has been residing to the place that the Lord has chosen, he may do so whenever he pleases. He may serve in the name of the Lord his God, like all his fellow Levites who are there in attendance before the Lord. They shall receive equal shares of the dues without regard to personal gifts or patrimonies. When you enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to imitate the abhorrent practices of those nations. Let no one be found among you who consigns his son or daughter to the fire or who is an augur a soothsayer, a diviner, a sorcerer, one who casts spells, or one who consults ghosts or familiar spirits, or one who inquires of the dead. For anyone who does such things is abhorrent to the Lord. And it is because of this, these abhorrent things that the Lord your God is dispossessing them before you. You must be wholehearted with the Lord your God. Those nations that you are about to dispossess do indeed resort to soothsayers and augurs to you. However, the Lord your God has not assigned the light. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet from among your own people, like myself, him you shall heed. This is just what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord my God any longer or see this wondrous fire any more, lest I die. Whereupon the Lord said to me, they have done well in speaking this. I will raise up a prophet for them from among their own people, like yourself. I will put my words into his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I command him. And if anybody fails to heed to the words he speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But any prophet who presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I did not command him to utter, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And should you ask yourselves, how can you know that the oracle was not spoken of the Lord if the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord and the oracle does not come true, that oracle was not spoken by the Lord. The prophet has uttered it presumptuously. Do not stand in dread of him. Chapter 19. When the Lord your God has cut 
down the nations whose land the Lord your God is assigning to you, and you have dispossessed them and settled in their towns and homes, you shall set aside three cities in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. You, you shall survey the distances and divide into three parts the territory of the country that the Lord your God has allotted to you, so that any manslayer may have a place to flee to. Now, this is the case of the manslayer who may flee there and live, one who has killed another unwittingly without having been his, his enemy in the past. For instance, a man goes with his neighbor into, to grow, into a grove to cut wood. As his hand swings the axe to cut down a tree, the axe head flies off the handle and strikes the other person so that he dies. That man shall flee to one of these cities and live. Otherwise, when the distance is great, the blood avenger pursuing the man's lair in hot anger may overtake him and kill him, yet he did not incur the death penalty since he had never been the other's enemy. That is why I command you, set aside three cities. And when the Lord your God enlarges your territory as he swore to your fathers and gives you all the land that he promised to give your fathers, if you faithfully observe all this instruction that I enjoin upon you this day to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways at all times, then you shall add three more towns to those, 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 I'm sorry, thus blood of the innocent will not be shed, bringing blood guilt upon you in the land that the Lord your God is allotting to you. If, however, a person who is the enemy of another lies in wait for him and sets upon him and strikes him a fatal blow and then flees to one of these towns, the elders of his town shall have him brought back from there and shall hand him over to the blood avenger to be put to death. You must show him no pity. Thus you will purge Israel of the blood of the innocent, and it will go well with you. You shall not move your countrymen's landmarks set up by previous generations if the, in the property that will be allotted to you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. A single witness may not validate any person, any guilt or blame, or any offense that may be committed. A case can be valid only on the testimony of two witnesses or more. If a man appear, appears against another to testify maliciously and gives false testimony against him, the two parties to the dispute shall appear before the Lord, before the priests or the magistrates in, in authority at that time. And the magistrate shall make a thorough investigation. If the man who testifies as a false witness, if he has testified falsely against his fellow, you shall do to him as he schemed to do to his fellow. Thus you will wipe out evil from your midst. Others will hear and be afraid and such evil things will not again be done in your midst. Nor must you show pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Chapter 20, when you take the field against your enemies and see forces and chariots, forces larger than you, have no fear of them, for the Lord your God, who brought you from the land of Egypt, is with you before you join battle. The priest shall come forward and address the troops. He shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, you are about to join battle with your enemy. Let not your courage falter. Do not be in fear or in panic or in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who marches with you to do battle for you against your enemy to bring you victory. Then the officials shall address the troops as follows. Is there anyone who has built a new house but has not dedicated it? Let him go back to his home lest he die in battle and another dedicate it. Is there anyone who has planted a vineyard but has never har harvested it? So let him go back to his home, lest he die in battle and another harvest it. Is there anyone who has paid the bride price for a wife but who has not yet married her? Let him go back to his home, lest he die in battle and another marry her. The officials shall go on addressing the troops and say, Is there anyone afraid or disheartened? Let him go back to his home lest the courage of his comrades flag like his. When the officials have finished addressing the troops, army commanders, commanders shall assume command of the troops. When you approach a town to attack it, you shall offer it terms of peace. If it responds peace, peaceably and lets you in, all the people present there shall serve you as 
forced labor. If it does not surrender to you, but when it join battle with you, you shall lay siege to it. And when the Lord your God delivers it into your hand, you shall put all its all its males to the sword. You, you may, however, take as your booty the women, the children, the livestock, and everything in the town, all its spoil, and enjoy the use of the spoil of your enemy, which the Lord your God gives you. Thus you shall deal with all its towns that lie very far from you, towns that do not belong to nations hereabout. If the towns of the latter peoples, however, which the Lord your God has given you as a heritage, you shall not let its soul remain alive. No, you must proscribe them, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you, lest they lead you into doing all the abhorrent things that they have done for their gods, and you stand guilty before the Lord, before the Lord your God. When in your, in your war against a city, you have to besiege it a long time in order to capture it, you must not destroy its trees, wielding, wielding the axe against them. You may eat at them, but you must not cut them down. Are trees in the field human to, to withdraw before you into the besieged cry? Only trees that you know do, do not yield food may be destroyed. You may cut them down for constructing siege works against the city that is waging war on you until it has been reduced. Chapter 21. Chapter 21, if in the land that the Lord your God is assigning you to possess, someone slain is found lying in the open, the identity of the slayer not being known, your elders and magistrates shall go out and measure the distances from the corpse to the nearby towns. The elders of the town near, nearest to the corpse shall then take a heifer for, which has never been worked, which is never pulled in a yoke. And the elders of that town shall bring the heifer down to an ever flowing wadi, which is not tilled or sown. There in the wadi they shall break the heifer's neck. The priests, sons of the priests, sons of Levi, shall come forward, for the Lord your God has chosen them to minister to him and to pronounce blessing in the name of the Lord. And every lawsuit and case of assault is subject to their ruling. Then all the elders of the town nearest to the corpse shall wash their hands over the heifer whose neck was broken in the wadi, and they shall make this declaration, our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see it done. Absolve, O Lord your people Israel, whom you redeemed, and do not let guilt for the blood of the innocent remain among your people Israel, and they will be absolved of blood guilt. Then you will be then you will remove from your midst guilt for the blood of the innocent, for you will be doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. When you take the field against your enemies and the Lord, your God delivers them into your power, and you take some of them captive, and you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and you desire her, and will take her to, to wife, you shall bring her into your house, and she shall trim her hair, hair her nails, and discard her captive's garb. She shall spend a month's time in your house, lamenting her father and mother. After that, you may come to her and possess her, and she shall be your wife. Then, should you no longer want her, you must release her outright. You must not sell her for money, since you had your will of her. You must not enslave her. If a man has two wives, one loved and the other unloved, and both the loved and the unloved have borne him sons. But the firstborn is the son of the unloved one. When he wills his property to his sons, he may not treat as firstborn the son of the loved one in regard, in, in disregard of the son of the unloved one who is older. Instead, he must accept the firstborn, the son of the unloved one, and allot to him a double portion of all he possesses, since he is the first fruit of his vigor, the birthright is his due. If a man has a wayward and defiant son who does not heed his father or mother and does not obey them, even after they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his town at the public places of his community. They shall say to the elders of his town, 
this son of ours is disloyal and defiant. He does not heed us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Thereupon the men of his town shall stone him to death. Thus you will sweep out evil from your midst. All Israel will, will hear and be afraid. If a man is guilty of a capital offense and is put to death, and you shall impale him on a stake, you must not let him, let his corpse remain on a stake overnight, but must bury him the same day. For an impaled body is an affront to God. You shall not defile the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Chapter 22, if you see your fellow's ox or sheep gone astray, do not ignore it. You must take it back to your fellow. If your fellow does not live near you or you do not know who he is, you shall bring it home and it shall remain with you until your fellow claims it. Then you shall go, then, then you shall give it back to him. You shall do the same with his donkey. You shall do the same with his garment. And so, too, shall you do with anything that your fellow loses and you find. You must not remain indifferent. If you see your fellow's donkey or ox fallen on the, on the road, do not ignore it. You must help him raise it. A woman must not put on man's apparel, nor shall a man wear woman's clothing. For whoever does these things is abhorrent to the Lord your God. If along the road you chance upon a bird's nest in any tree or on the ground with fledglings or eggs and the mother sitting over the fledglings or on the eggs do not take the mother together with her young let the mother go and take only the young in order that you may fare well and have a long life when you build a new house you may you shall make a parapet for your roof so that you do not bring blood guilt on your house if anyone should fall from it you shall not sow your vineyard with a second kind of seed, else the crop from the seed you have sown and the yield of the vineyard may not be used. You shall not plow with an ox or, or a donkey together. You shall not wear clothing combined of wool and linen. You shall make tassels on the four corners of the garment with which you cover yourself. A man marries a woman and cohabits with her. Then he takes an aversion to her and makes up charges against her and, and defames her, saying, I married this woman, but when I approached her, I found that she was not a virgin. In such a case, the girl's father and mother shall produce the evidence of the girl's virginity before the elders of the town at the gate. And the girl's father shall say to the elder, I gave this man my daughter to wife, but he has taken an aversion to her. So he has made up charges, saying, I did not find your daughters of daughter of virgin but here is the evidence of my daughter's virginity and they shall spread out the cloth before the elders of the town the elders of that town shall then take the man and flog him and they shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give it to the girl's father for the man has defamed a virgin in israel moreover she shall remain his wife he shall never have the right to divorce her but if the charge proves true the girl was failed not to have been a virgin then the girl shall be brought out to the entrance of her father's house and the men of her town shall stone her to death for she did not did a shameful thing in israel committing fornication while under her father's authority thus she will sweep away evil from your midst if a man is found lying with another man's wife both of them the man and the woman with whom he lay shall die thus she will sweep away evil from israel in the case of a virgin who is engaged to a man, if a man comes upon her in town and lies with her, you shall take the two of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The girl, because she did not cry for help in the town, and the man, because he violated another man's wife, thus she will sweep away evil from your midst. But if the man, if the man comes upon the engaged girl in the open country and the man lies with her by force, only the man who lay with her shall die. But you shall do nothing to the girl. The girl did not incur the death penalty for this case is like that of a man attacking another and murdering him. He came upon her in the open. Though the engaged girl cried for help, there was no one to save her. If a man comes upon a virgin who is not engaged and he seizes her and lies with her and they are discovered, the man who lay with her shall pay the girl's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has violated her. He can never have the right to divorce her. Chapter 23. No man shall marry his father's former wife, 
so as to remove his father's garment. No one whose testes are crushed or whose member is cut off shall be admitted into the congregation of the Lord. No one misgotten shall be admitted into the congregation of the Lord. None of, none of his descendants, even in, to the tenth generation, shall be admitted into the congregation of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite shall be admitted into the congregation of the Lord. None of their descendants, even in the tenth generation, shall ever be admitted into the congregation of the Lord, because they did not meet you with, with food and water on your journey after you left Egypt, and because they hired Balaam, son of Beor, from Pethor of Aram, Naharam, to curse you, but the Lord your God refused to heed Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you, for the Lord your God loves you. You shall never concern yourself with their welfare or benefit as long as you live. You shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your kinsman. You shall not abhor an Egyptian, for you were a stranger in his land. Children born to them may be admitted into the congregation of the, of the Lord in the third generation. When you go out as a troop against your enemies, be on your guard against anything untoward. If anyone among you has been rendered unclean by a nocturnal admission, he must leave the camp, and he must not re-enter the camp. Toward evening, he shall bathe them water, and at sundown, he may re-enter the camp. Further, there shall be an area for you outside the camp where you may relieve yourself with your gear. You shall have a spike, and when you have squatted, you shall dig a hole with it and cover up your excrement. Since the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you, let your camp be holy. Let him not find anything unseemly among you and turn away from you. You shall not turn over to his master a slave who seeks refuge with you from his master. He shall live with you in any place he may choose among the settlements in your midst. Whether he pleases, he, you must not ill treat him. No Israelite woman shall be a cult prostitute, nor shall any Israelite man be a cult prostitute. You shall not bring the fee of a whore or, or the pay of a dog into the house of the Lord your God in fulfillment of any vow. For both of, are abhorrent to the Lord your God. You shall not deduct interest from loans to your countrymen, whether in money or food or anything else that can be deducted as, as interest. But you may deduct interest from loans to foreigners. Do not deduct interest from loans to your countrymen so that your, the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings in the land that you're about to enter and possess. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not put off fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will require it of you, and you will have incurred guilt, whereas you're, you incur no guilt if you refrain from vowing. You must fulfill what has crossed your lips and perform what you have voluntarily vowed to, to the Lord your God, having made the promise with your own mouth. Now you're going to see this in the book of Judges. There is one, um, one leader that does this without thinking and and he will have many regrets for for making the vow without thinking and he knew that he ended up fulfilling the vow but um it didn't really go well for him and 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 for the person that that it involved and that's all i'm going to say that's a spoiler alert for when we get to that section in judges when you enter another man's vineyard you may eat as many grapes as you want until you are full, but you must not put any in your vessel. And when you enter another man's field of standing grain, you may pluck ears with your hand, but you must not put a sickle to your neighbor's grain. Chapter 24, a man takes a wife and possesses her. She fails to please him because he finds something obnoxious about her, and he writes her a bill of divorcement, hands it to her, and sends her away from his house. She leaves his household and becomes the wife of another man. Then this latter man rejects her, writes her bill of divorcement, hands it to her, and sends her away from his house. Or the man who married her last dies. Then the first husband who divorced her shall not take her to wife again, since she has been defiled, for that would be abhorrent to the Lord. You must not bring sin upon the land that the Lord your God has given you as a heritage. When a man has taken a bride, he shall not go out with the army or be assigned to it for any purpose, he shall be exempt one year for the sake of his household. 
to give happiness to the woman he has married. A hand mill or an upper millstone shall not be taken in pawn, for that would be taking someone's life in pawn. If a man is found to be to have kidnapped a fellow Israelite, enslaving him or selling him, that kidnapper shall die, thus she will sweep out evil from your midst. In cases of a skin affection, be most careful to do exactly as the Levitical priests instruct you. Take care to do as I have commanded them. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the journey after you left Egypt. When you make a loan of any sort to your countrymen, you must not enter his house to seize his pledge. You must remain outside while the man to whom you made the loan brings the pledge out to you. If he is a needy man, you shall not go to sleep in his pledge. You must return the pledge to him at sundown that he may sleep in his flock and bless you, and it will be to your merit before the Lord your God. You shall not abuse a needy and destitute laborer, whether a fellow countryman or a stranger in one of the communities of your land. You must pay him his wages on the same day before the sun sets, for he is needy and urgently depends on it. Else he will cry out to the Lord against you, and you will incur guilt. Parents shall not be put to death for children, nor children be put to death for parents. A person shall be put to death only for his own crime. You shall not subvert the rights of the stranger or the fatherless. You shall not take a widow's garment and pawn. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and that the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore do, do I enjoin you to observe this commandment. When you reap the harvest in your field and overlook a sheep in the field, do not turn back to get it. It shall go to the stranger, the father, fatherless, and the widow, in order that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings. When you beat down the fruit of your olive trees, do not go over them again. That shall go to the stranger, the father, fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, do not pick it over again. That shall go to the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Always remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, do I enjoin you to observe the commandment. Chapter 25. When there is a dispute between men and they go to law and a decision is rendered declaring the one is right and the other is wrong, if the guilty one is to, to be flogged, the magistrate shall have him lie down and be given lashes in his presence by court. As his guilt weren't, he may be given up to 40 lashes but not more, lest being flogged further to excess, your brother be degraded before your eyes. You shall not muzzle an ox while it is threshing. When brothers dwell together and one of them dies and leaves no son, the wife of the deceased shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall unite with her. He shall take her as his wife and perform the, the, the labor the lever's duty. This is the leveret marriage. So the first son that she bears shall be accounted to the dead brother that his name may not be blotted out in Israel. But if the man does not want to marry his brother's widow, his brother's widow shall appear before the elders in the gate and declare, my husband's brother refuses to establish a name in Israel for his brother. He will not perform the duty of a lever. And that's L-E-V-I-R. Uh, the elders of his town shall then summon him and talk to him. If he insists, saying, I do not want to marry her, if his brother's widow shall go up to him in the presence of the elders, pull this sandal off his foot, spit in his face, and make this declaration. Thus shall be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house. And he shall go in Israel by the name of the family of the unsandaled one. If two men get into a fight with each other and the, and the wife of of one comes up to save her husband from the antagonist and puts her hand and seizes him by his genitals she, you shall cut off her hand show no pity you shall not have in your pouch alternate weights larger larger and smaller you shall not have in your house alternate measures of larger and smaller you shall you must have completely honest weights and completely honest measures if you are to endure long on the soil that the lord your god is giving you for everyone who does these things, everyone who deals dishonestly is abhorrent to the Lord your God. Remember what Amalek did to you on your journey after you left Egypt. How 
Undeterred by fear of God, he supplies you on the march when you are famished and weary and cut down all the stragglers in your rear. Uh, therefore, when the Lord your God grants you safety from all your enemies around you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you a hereditary portion, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek under heaven. Do not forget. Well, just a spoiler alert. They did not do exactly what the Lord had stated had had intended for them to do and as we see amalek the spirit of amalek is a problem today even but we really saw it um in the, in the book of esther haman was a descendant of amalek and he wanted to annihilate the jewish the whole jewish population there um and that did not happen so now what we just read was more of Moses' address to the people. And remember, the first generation already had this knowledge, um, but, but this is the second generation who is going into the promised land. The first generation died out. Um, they were not permitted to go across the Jordan because of unbelief. And so Moses is giving, giving the law twice. So, and actually, that is what Deuteronomy actually means in the Septuagint Greek context. So that is all we have for this week. We're going to complete the book of Deuteronomy next week. Father God, we just thank you for this word. We thank you that, that you loved your people and you wanted them to be holy to you. And you set, you set mitzvah you said commandments that they needed to follow and you wanted them to live peacefully among one, one another and to be to be just to one another not cheat each other so you set all those those laws in in place for the people may we look at history and not repeat history because we know that our ancestors messed up time and time and time again and we don't need to do that. We can learn from experience. So thank you for your word. Thank you for preserving your word for all these years. We're so grateful to you, Father God, and we give you all our praise and glory belongs to you and honor belongs to you. We revere you. We honor you, Father God, and we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. We're going to go into the altar call and then we're going to close out. Um, the Bible study for the Tanakh for this week. If you've never given your life to the Lord, this is an altar call and this is an opportunity to do so. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ through Yeshua. Yeshua is his Hebrew name and it means salvation. The Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever we could be reconciled to the father sin cannot stand before a holy god and the wages of sin are death and he paid our sin debt in full by giving his own life for us so he reversed the curse that occurred in the garden of eden that was committed by mankind and this is the reason why he had to come as a human being to reverse the curse that was done by mankind that a man reversed it Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. He put a plan in motion. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. You also um, have free will. So God does not force that issue on you. Uh, he, he would love it if you willingly, of course, come to him. And that's what, he, what the, the goal is, is that you willingly come and you love him enough to come to him. You will not get to heaven any other way. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. If there was so many different paths that you could take to get to heaven, so many roads, um, 
Yeshua would have never had to, to come and die. He would have never had to become human and die the horrific death that he did. So that is not wise to listen to the world on these uh, on those matters. Eternity is forever. Yes, you do have a, a choice. You have free will to make that decision. But understand this, that Yeshua is coming again to rule and reign as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is King. He is Lord. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is all you need to do is go before him and ask for forgiveness. He's already paid your sin debt in full. He's just waiting for you to come to him. He has also taken our illnesses and afflictions, and we can say by his wounds we are healed. Now this is a this whole thing is a choice that you individually will make. Everybody will make their own choice. Don't miss heaven. You can have that blessed assurance today of being saved and born again. You can say the simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I need a savior and that savior is Jesus, Yeshua. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again and is sitting at your right hand right now waiting to return. And, and I believe he is coming back and he's coming soon. And I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to, I don't want to miss this gift that's been given to me. It is not through anything that I could possibly do. I know I couldn't, I know now I could never do anything to save myself. But Yeshua did it all for me. Yeshua, I am confessing my, in my sins, any sin that I've ever committed, and I'm turning from them, and I'm asking for forgiveness, and thank you so much for paying my sin debt in full already. So I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life. And I declare you today as my Lord and Savior from this moment on. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am born again. I am set free, delivered, saved. And I'm set free from the sin and the consequences of sin. And I also believe that through you, Yeshua, that I'm healthy of mind, body, and soul. I pray this prayer in the name above all names, the mightiest name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. If you have said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or a Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible. Get involved in their Bible study. Um, you can also continue to partake in all of ours. They are all online for you, uh, and you can certainly partake of them. Develop a prayer life. Pray to your Heavenly Father. You are now born into a, the family of God, whereby the Creator of all things is now your Heavenly Father. You can have conversation with Him. You can, you can be as Abraham was. You know, as you would talk to a friend, you can talk to God. He hears you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He wants relationship with you. He does not care about religion. So don't get all caught up in, you know, certain denominations that you want to just check out to see if you, you want to be part of. I say find a Bible, a Bible based church. I almost said that backwards there. A Bible based church that uses the Bible, period, and doesn't bring in doctrines of, of other religion, doesn't, doesn't bring in traditions of man, and anything from the world, but sticks to the Bible. That is very, very important. And get a hard copy of the Bible yourself. So that is how you can know that what you're hearing in, in the church that you might decide to join, or synagogue, that you're hearing the truth. And there's that, that's a fine way to discern that is to read the Bible yourself. Go to Bible Hub. They've 
Bible Gateway, and you can select from numerous versions of the Bible what you're most comfortable with, and that should probably be your first purchase, the one that you're most comfortable with, because you're more likely to read the Bible. So we're going to close for this this week. I'm going to close it with the Aaronic blessing. This is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to his to Aaron and his sons. Aaron and his sons at that point in time were ministering to the children of Israel. They ministered to them. Um, and what God wanted to do was put his name upon the children of Israel and bless them. And he gave specific words in which he wanted spoken over them. This blessing exists all the way to today that is still used. If you've been to a church or synagogue, you've heard this blessing. I can guarantee you, you have. This blessing is absolutely for you. Um, as a member of the family of God, God has already put his name on you, sealed you with his Holy Spirit. So yes, this blessing is for you. So I'm going to say it in Hebrew first, and then I'm going to say it in English. In Hebrew, it goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Now, we've already posted the, the services, the Sunday services. Um, actually, we've posted the, the NASB. Um, this is the Tanakh. There will be the Passion Translation following. And don't forget, on Thursday, we have the National Day of Prayer. This is just a very busy week. And also, uh, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we meet live and real time. And you're welcome to come join us. Well, God bless each and every one of you. Again, Shavuot Tov. Have a good week.